Okay, 1963, this was an alley. Uh, Officer Campbell and Hedinger are standing right here when they notice a 1946 Ford. They're in a hurry. When they notice a 1964 Ford come this direction, right in front of them, uh, heading down this direction. And now if you look down a ways, that appears to be a dead end, but it's not. You could turn right. Well, they make a U-turn. They're coming back on Carlos. And the officers just thought, well, it's an illegal U-turn, so they had reason to pull them over. Plus, her license plate light bulb was burned out. So they follow them up to this corner uh, and make a stop in their undercover police car. Uh, I'll go up there next and show you a picture of the actual car. I'm at Gower and Carlos. They came down this street and pulled them over right here. Uh, this is the undercover car sitting on this corner right here. And make note of the roof line and this signal here. Which is right right there. towards Bakersfield and this is the route that they took after you were abducted. It's actually a few miles back it's really beautiful drive there's lots of nice really nice looking mountains on each side of the road so this is 99 North we're going to get off at 166 up here shortly. We're at the natural gas pipeline. Uh, they're in the process of extending this pipeline straight out this direction. Back in uh, March of 63, they had onion fields out there. So this is an important part of the story. Now we're at the exact spot. As you can see, this is a pipeline here. And it goes straight this direction. So 1963, there's a trench right here, right here on the road. They're coming down this road in the 1946 Maroon Ford Coupe, the two-door. And as they get up here, they run into the trench. Again, uh, this is where the pipeline is. They run into the trench right here. They can't go any farther. So what happens next is Ian Campbell was driving the 46 Ford. Uh, Gregory Powell, who's in the front seat with him, asked him to get out of the car. And again, they've been on gunpoint this entire trip. It took me about an hour or 10 minutes to get up here. So they get out of the car, all four people get out of the car so we got Ian Campbell the driver and the front seat was Gregory Powell back seat is Frank Hedinger the other police officer next to him is Jimmy Lee Smith now uh, Hedinger is in the back seat crouched down the entire trip so you can just imagine his legs going to sleep and we'll talk more about that in a minute so uh, Next thing that happens is Gregory Powell walks out from behind the car, walks up to Ian Campbell and asks him the question, have you heard about the Little Lindbergh Law? Campbell says yes. At this very moment, uh, Gregory Powell shoots him in the face. He falls right here. He falls right in front of the ditch. Uh, the other officer, Frank Hedinger, takes off I uh, jumped through a fence, a barbed wire fence here, and he's zigzagging across the onion field, and the bad guys are shooting at him, and they're missing. 
he finally gets out here and he hides hides out in the field the onion fields uh, Frank Hedinger testified that he heard four more shots of the bad guys shooting Officer Campbell right here and of course of course uh, Gregory Powell and Jimmy Lee Smith blame each other for their four additional shots but Gregory Powell definitely uh, shot Ian Campbell in the face just underneath the nose uh, right above the chin shot him in the mouth area uh, officer officer Hedinger uh, goes about four miles out in this direction runs into a farmhouse uh, the farmer's name is um, Opal Fry and we'll drive by there next take a look uh, in this area uh, the two bad guys are driving these side roads these side gravel dirt roads with the police flashlights uh, looking uh, at the edge of the road out in the fields uh, trying to find officer Hedinger and they can't find him they finally give up and take off. Uh, one goes to Bakersfield, and the other one go goes back towards LA. Now I'd like to show you some pictures so you can match up. Uh, well, this area has changed. There's there's no onion fields. But I'll match up some pictures and we'll look at this mountain in the background and uh, compare, uh, compare what it looked like back in the day. I also want to point out that the bad guys came back later and picked up Officer Ian Campbell's body and just threw him in a ditch here and take off. He's dead. Okay, let's get to pictures. Okay, and where the uh, blue X is, that's the pipeline that we stopped at on the way to this area. So the pipeline went straight over. natural gas. Uh, this is the next day March 10th and we got um, Jimmy Lee Smith he's in hand handcuffs right here he brings detectives out to this area if you look at the arrow uh, that's the fence the area that office Offinger Hedinger jumped through uh, when he was escaping. But I want to point out uh, yeah, this this telephone pole right here, and then there's a crease in the mountain just over the uh, detective's shoulder. Make note of those two things. So we got the uh, telephone pole, and straight ahead you can see the crease. Also within this picture, there's the. Uh, the ditch, the trench, where they're putting a pipeline in, and that was right here. That was right here. Right here in this area. Alright, here's another one on the crime scene. Uh, again, uh, handcuffed. Uh, Jimmy Lee Smith, uh, the reenactment, and look at the mountains in the background. Uh, this is it right here. Uh, 
Uh, here's another picture the other direction. I'll, I'll turn this way so we can see it better. But make note of the telephone poles. There they are. This will be the direction they came in. Uh, this is a police photo dated March 10, 63. Officer Hedinger being treated. And here's another March 10th. Officer Hedinger, he's come across this, these fields here against about four miles. It's like running on sand, beach sand, uh, falling, tripping, scared to death, escaping the bad guys with guns. He's already saw his, uh, his partner shot in cold blood. So he finally makes his way out this way and he comes to this farmhouse right here in the corner. And he uses the phone to call the authorities. It happened right here. This is Opal Fry's farmhouse. So I thought I'd get on down the road because this is out in the middle of the rural areas. And I didn't want to. I didn't want to cause any alarm. But I want to tell you a little more about the visit when. Uh, Officer Hedinger got to Opal Fry's house. He knocks on the door. Now it's close to 1 a.m. Uh, the farmer and his wife, he's got a teenage son, sound asleep. Uh, come to the door startled and they see the mess the officer's in. Uh, they let him come in uh, to use the phone. And uh, uh, Carl Hedinger sees a cold cup of coffee on the kitchen table he's so thirsty he just goes right over and downs it well this gives the clue to uh, the farmer's wife I don't know her name uh, so she makes she gives him water makes him uh, hot coffee fixes him a snack so he can get his energy up uh, next thing that happens is the farmer and the son Opal's son they go get their shotguns and they come uh, they come to the door, uh, they dim the lights, they're watching the door and the windows uh, for the bad guys. I'm going to finish up the video with a, uh, a gravesite visit where Ian Campbell's buried. Uh, but before we go down there, uh, I want to talk a little more about uh, Hedinger. I think I've been calling him Frank. His real name's Carl. I apologize for that. I got a friend named Frank. But uh, uh, Carl struggles. I think he lasts another five years with the LAPD. Uh, he felt guilty, struggled. Had many emotional problems because of this. Now, uh, what would you do? What would you do if you're faced with that decision? Uh, do you give up your weapon? Or do you keep it? This is very breathtaking out here. Beautiful. Uh, Los Angeles is straight ahead. But I've heard both sides of the coins. Coin, I talk to police officers, they say you never give up your weapon. And then I also heard you gotta survive, you gotta do what you gotta do. Tough, tough situation. I want to recommend a book uh, written by Wamba, The Onion Field. It's a really good read, and you can learn a lot about this case. We're getting
been some wind today. We're up here on we're up here on a hill. But here is a gravesite location of uh, Ian Campbell, Ian James Campbell. Uh, born 1931. He died right at midnight in March of 63. So his death certificate says March 10th. He's buried right next to uh, William Campbell, who's a medical doctor. This is his father. He dies in 44, so he dies when Ian's a young guy. Uh, Ian Campbell played the uh, bagpipes. So at his funeral service, they play the bagpipes. It's also a tradition that whenever there's a fallen officer, uh, bagpipes are played. Now I've been to other police services for uh, fallen law enforcement uh, people, and they also play the bagpipes there, or the ones I've been to anyway. But here in LA, it's definitely a tradition now. Chrissy Campbell, I don't know if it's any relation, but she dies at age 93. Tough story. I just wanted to share with everybody. I've been interested in the Onion Field murder since the movie came out in 1979. It had James Woods in it. It's also the acting debut of uh, Ted Danson. He played the part of uh, Ian Campbell right here. Well, that wraps this one up. Uh, while I'm here, I think I'll look around at uh, some other famous, famous grave sites. So, uh, please subscribe and I'll talk to you later.